Hello, I'm Oren. I'm Trevor. And we're here to talk to you about how you can reappropriate your content for smaller screens. Now, right now, uh, PDFs are not used for smaller screens. No. And uh, what we want to do is try to illustrate our problem using Paul. Hi, this is Paul. Uh, he is a 25-year-old uh, former grad student, just graduated, and this is his first big job. Uh, and his big report is due on Monday, but he has a big problem. Yes, whenever you try to connect his printer to his computer, there seemed to be some troubleshooting issues. Then it happened that his computer couldn't connect to the Wi-Fi connection he tried to set up, so he couldn't connect to the HP site like he normally would have. But he realized that he could have his iPhone, and he downloaded the HP support app that's already available in the marketplace. So once he downloaded that, it opened up to a product page where he had to register his product. Well, he didn't know how to do that, so after some searching, he found that he needed a serial number, which he couldn't find on the printer. So now he had to take all the stuff that he had set up on the printer. He had to dust up all the dust that had accumulated on there. Maybe that's the reason why it doesn't work. I don't know. He doesn't know. We're getting ahead of ourselves. He picks up the printer, picks it up at the bottom, and sees that the serial number is at the very back of the printer in very small print. So he has to hold the printer very close well, in one hand while in the other hand he's trying to input the serial number. Once he does that, he has to find the right printer does that through a search on the function. So all of this process just to get his project registered in order to find out what problem it was, took him about four minutes. Four minutes that he could have spent looking at the data, finding his problem, but he had to spend it physically manhandling his printer and unplugging it, replugging it, uh, and also inputting it on his phone, which was a hassle. So, so once he got to the product page, he went through all the options that he wanted to try to do. Since he's very impatient and wants to get their support printed out as soon as possible, he goes to the live chat option. But unfortunately, that isn't taking as long as it was, and a few times it shut down, which is a current issue with the current version of the application right now. And he did want to go through some of the more time-expanding options, such as posting on the forums and waiting for a response, or trying to find an FAQ because his current problem isn't listed. And then he wants to contact HP, but the only way they do that is through an email, which also might not take a short amount of time. So the only option he has left is the technical manual. So when he downloads that, it takes a while because he has AT&T on his iPhone, not exactly reliable. So it takes about maybe four minutes, as it did with Warren on his phone. It's a very long time. And it's a 120-page document, so of course it's going to be about a couple of megs, which is a couple of gigs in the phone talk. So once it finally opens up, he, he really finds out that PDFs don't fit on small mobile devices. Mobile devices are about five inches long, and they, uh, PDFs are optimized for eight by 11 uh, inches. And maybe larger screens would open it, and you could look at it well, but not on this device, obviously. So when he opens it, this is what he sees. 120 pages, 120 pages to flip through, and the, the text is obviously microscopic. He can't use this information. He has to look through manually on his iPhone. Then if he tries to zoom in, he loses half the text. Obviously a big problem for him because he has to now scroll sideways, horizontally, and vertically through 120 pages. It's not useful. And what he normally would do on the uh, desktop version of the PDF would be to use the table of contents and use that as a clickable searchable option. So if you want to do a specific site, you click the heading, it would take it straight to there. But that's not supported with the iOS or the Android version of the PDF. Yeah, especially with the iPhone version, you can only look at it one way and you can zoom in only one way. So physically demanding. He's getting frustrated. He's also a little impatient. And while the Android version differs a little bit between the zooming, what another way you can do that is to uh, reformat the view, which makes the text auto scroll. So it's not bleeding over to the right side, and everything automatically either goes to the left or is hyphened to where there's less words uh, per line, which means it'll magnify the text. However, this sacrifices the style formatting, so you're going to have some issues in terms of the design and the layout. But also, it eliminates all images from the document which takes out all the uh, visual diagrams that he could have used in order to help this problem. That only works on Android, right? Yes, that's only for Android. 
So now, a search function would make Paul very happy at this point because he would love to search for a specific problem. But it's not covered in the troubleshooting options. So he gets irate. He grows a stubble beard within a few minutes. <laughs> He's absolutely ready to smash this phone. The phone that hasn't helped him and the HP printer that lies lifeless on the floor. So, we're here to offer a three-step solution that's going to help you optimize this web app for Paul so that he can shave. To use a metaphor, it's sort of like building up a huge trip, you're getting the family together, you're driving across country to Disneyland, you have your trials and tribulations, a flat tire here, you gotta fill up your gas can there. You finally get to Disneyland and you realize it's closed for renovations. Yeah. All that work for nothing. Your Uncle Jeff's been farting in the car the whole time. It's really not a very fun trip. And then when you get there, what a letdown. Mm -hmm. So now his only option now is to call the life help, which of course is the one option that HP doesn't want since that's the one that costs them money. So what we want to do is three steps. We want to modify the content on how PDFs are made up and its delivery methods using chunking functions and uh, third-party software. We want to utilize QR codes for all future HP products in order to help register their products faster and get them to the product page without all the hassle that Paul had to go through. And we also want to integrate multimedia, mainly the video and audio how-tos in order to help people that are more visual or audio interested. So the first step is modifying PDFs so that they can be reformatted on mobile screens. First, you have to take the PDFs in their original form, which is PDF, and use Adobe 11 Pro, which you probably already have on your computer, to transfer it into a Word document, all of them into Word documents. Then, through editing, extensive editing, which will take a long time, but you will be able to chunk the content into small, reasonable, clear bits of data that will be useful on mobile phones. Then, using Doc2 Help, uh, 2012, you can buy the Enterprise Edition for about $1,000. Uh, you can upload them all in web streaming, uh, formatable content for mobile phones. It allows it to put it into the same uh, HTML function that you used to build the application on that since you already used all your resources to build that app in the first place instead of creating a whole another app or delivery method for technical manuals. You can use the resources you already have and just expand upon that, and it should save you a little bit much more money. The infrastructure's already there. This is sort of a mock-up of what we think a technical menu will look like after chunking. Right here is the printer that Paul had, which would be photo smart. And uh, if you click the contents right here, these are all of the headings that you would have clicked to search through it. So it's sort of an easier way to look through the uh, table of contents that you would have done on the desktop version. Simple display. It shows Paul where he needs to go and what he wants. Paul wants his data fast, and he wants it now. So this is an easy way to show Paul that we care about him. And you also have a searchable function here. So with the formatting that the Doctor Help 2012 allows, it brings context into your searches. So if you were to bring a certain uh, search term. Uh, for example, looking up formatting. Looking up formatting. It would uh, bring only certain information that uh, you would want given if you specify the problem. We also uh, want to use QR codes for all future products. Uh, what we would do is that instead of just having the sole options of inputting your serial number or product number once you open the app, it would have a QR code on there. And the best thing about this is that HP already has a photo scanning app called Code Scan. But basically, the only reason for this to exist is for consumers to scan barcodes to see where a certain deal is for an item. So if you scan an HP printer, the only thing it will tell you is that these are the locations where it's discounted and these are the places where you can buy them. And here's some customer reviews that are from a third party site. But it also has a QR scanner to where you can scan a QR and you can use it to either destinate towards a certain app or destinate towards a web page. And we want to integrate the code scan within the app, making sort of the disparate functions that many HP apps already have, and making them work together to sort of optimize the resources you already have. Uh, they're very cheap to produce. Uh, you won't need as many QR codes since you will only need one per product line. And it will take you to the same information after that. So whenever he scans a QR code at the beginning, it's going to take him to that same product page that it took Paul four minutes to get to. 
which with the QR code takes about maybe three seconds. Three seconds? Three seconds. So we all know that we live in a visual world and multimedia is the future. We have YouTubes, we have all sorts of tubes. And simple video how-tos are what Paul needs to help himself. Uh, Self-help uh, videos can be easily uploaded and done professionally for very cheap. And uh, Apple and Dell, your competitors, probably already, already do have these and utilize them well. But I think we can utilize them much better on this mobile app. Tedco manuals these days, even though they're very easy to use in some parts, they're also becoming more and more archaic as time goes on and technology advances. So I believe that with these video how-tos, it'll help illustrate the problems more clearly. It'll allow them to shorten the content since you want to create shorter videos in order to uh, shorten the streaming it would take to do that. And also you can allow for audio for the more hands-on people that still would like to hear step-by-step -step what to do but require more focus on the product themselves. Yeah, if you're 